Hello dear friends, welcome to Top Scholars, the smart learning app. As promised, we are back with the concept video for population interaction. So in this topic, you are going to learn about all of these interactions and then we will solve some previous year questions. You can take a pause and take a screenshot. Now let's proceed with the lecture. So here we have a table which if you remember I told you we need to memorize if we want to guarantee 4 marks in our examination. We will see the concept as well but for a quick go through you should remember this table. So we have species A in first column then we have species B and lastly we are having the name of the interaction. So here the very first one is mutualism. Remember mutualism is having two positive or two plus signs. Then followed by this is competition. Remember these are the opposite to each other. That means if two plus signs are there for mutualism, we will have two minus signs for competition. Why is this so? We will see in just few moments. For the time being, please remember the signs that we are using to represent the interactions. Then we have predation. Here we have 1 plus and then 1 minus sign. Next we have parasitism. Remember that predation and parasitism have same signs for representation that is 1 plus and 1 minus sign. Then lastly we have two interactions that is commensalism and amensalism wherein one species should have a zero sign. Okay, This zero sign is for neutral behavior. Okay. And for commensalism, you need to remember there is a plus sign for one species. That means overall we have plus for one species and another species is represented by zero. Okay. Then for amensalism, we have one negative sign that is one minus sign and then this is followed by a zero sign. Over here we can use a simple trick that is to write A we use a dash, right? So that dash can be linked to a minus sign. And hence you will remember that amensalism has minus and zero representation. While in commensalism, the first letter that is C is not having any dash sign. So there is a plus sign for its representation. Now friends, we have plus sign for a beneficial interaction, minus sign for a detrimental interaction and zero sign as we just said represents a neutral interaction. Okay. So friends, now let us dive deep into the concepts of each of these interactions separately. So the very first one is mutualism. So what do you see over here? Yes, there is an inflorescence and on it there is a insect. So here friends, this is an excellent example for mutualism interaction. Now what is this tree? Which tree is bearing this inflorescence? It is a fig tree. And the insect is nothing but the wasp. So here a fig tree and wasp has mutualistic interaction. Let us see how. So basically you can see this wasp are pollinating the fig's inflorescence. Okay. So fig tree is having a benefit with this interaction. But how this wasp is getting the benefits? Let's see. So here we can say that wasp pollinated the fig's inflorescence. And in return, this wasp will lay eggs in the fig fruit. As you can see over here, these are the tiny tiny eggs which are laid by the wasp. So basically, wasp is helping in pollination, no doubt. But it can also lay the eggs in the fig's inflorescence and they will hatch there and new organisms will be reproduced. So it kind of got a place to lay the eggs. So we can say that both of the interacting species were benefited with this interaction. So this is termed as mutualism. Okay, I hope this concept is clear. Now let us take another example as well to better understand mutualism. So here we have another one in which the interacting organisms are fungus and algae. Okay. So you know that fungus are heterotrophic in their nutrition mode and algae are autotrophic. That means fungus cannot produce their own food but algae can. Okay. So over here 
here you can see this is an image of lichen. Please remember this structure. See how algal cells are arranged and then there are fungal hyphae penetrating those algal cells. So in this interaction who is getting what? Let us see. Fungus gets the organic compound produced by cyanobacteria which is algae. Some also classify it under bacteria these days. But let's come back to the scope of our discussion. So fungus is getting the organic compounds which are produced by the autotrophic cyanobacteria and what is fungus providing? Yes, please take a look on the hyphae of the fungus. What is the function of those structures? They are very good in absorption process. So fungus will provide moisture and nutrients by absorbing them from the environment and it also is providing an anchor. So basically fungus is giving something and in return it is getting something as well. Hence again an example of mutualistic interaction. Now friends let's see over here. Why do you think we have a mushroom in here? Yes because mushroom belongs to the kingdom fungi and right now we were talking about fungus. Over here what do you see? Why do we have this beautiful scenario in our discussion? Yes these are the lichens that we just saw the diagram of. Okay. So lichens are a symbiotic association between fungi and photosynthesizing algae. Now please remember this symbiotic word over here. Symbiosis is a phenomenon in which different species or different organisms are living together. Okay. So lichens as you can see over here the fungus and algae are living together. Hence we can say that it is a symbiotic association. Now friends let's move on over here with another example and that is of mycorrhizae. We just saw that in lichen we have fungus and algae right. In mycorrhizae we have fungus but the other partner is plants okay. So basically you can take a guess what will fungus provide to the plants? Yes the nutrients and the salts that it is absorbing from the environment and as algae were autotrophic higher plants are also autotrophic in nature. So plants will also provide the organic compounds only okay by the process of photosynthesis. So mycorrhizae is an association between fungi and the roots of higher plants growing in mineral deficient soil. This mineral deficient is very important because since the minerals and nutrients are deficient in the soil there is a requirement of fungal partner which will do the absorption more efficiently as compared to when absorption is done only by the roots of the higher plants. Okay. So here we have two images one without mycorrhizae and another with mycorrhizae. As you can see the soil zone which is covered without mycorrhizae is very small as compared to the soil zone that is being covered with mycorrhizae. Okay, so that's why we can say that mycorrhizae is also a mutualistic interaction. As we just talked, fungi absorb water and minerals from the soil and make it available for plants, while plants provide nutrition to the growing fungi as they cannot prepare their own food. Okay, so remember in mutualism we have seen many examples. First one was fig tree and the wasp, then we saw the lichens. Then we saw the mycorrhizae as well. Okay. So I hope with these many examples mutualism interaction is very clear to all of you. Now we will proceed with the another interaction and that is of competition. Look over here. What do you see? Yes, these are flamingos. And what are they eating? They are eating fishes. So friends over here the flamingos and resident fishes have their common food which is zooplankton okay and they are competing for it. Let's take an analogy of say I have 10 chocolates with me in this room and there are 50 students and they all are intending to eat those chocolates. Now what will happen? Yes, so every student will compete with each other for getting those chocolates but in this competition neither of the student will get ample amount of chocolate for himself or herself. So as you can see in competitive interaction 
neither of the interacting species are totally benefited okay they always lose there is never ample amount of food or the thing they are competing for available for one species only hence we are representing competition interaction with two minus signs okay whereas in mutualism we had both the interacting species getting benefits and hence we used two plus signs for mutualism now let's go ahead and see these zooplanktons what is the criteria that will lead you to say that some organism is called as zooplankton are these microorganisms or can we see them what is the deal with this zooplanktons so friends please remember zooplanktons are those organisms which don't have the capability to swim okay they are dependent on the water currents to get from one place to another so if i take an example of jellyfish what happens how can it move yes because of water currents it has those tentacles but those are all involved in food gaining and the poisoning all of those things not in propulsion through the water okay and hence these jellyfishes are zooplanktons and if i take another example of say fishes sharks dolphins or little tadpoles of frogs or very minute tiny fishes are those zooplanktons no why because they can swim they can take themselves from one place to another they are not dependent on the water current for their movement hence these all things are not coming under zooplanktons so coming back to our current discussion these zooplanktons were the common food for flamingos as well as the resident fishes and hence a competition arose and the representation of competition is minus minus why because neither the flamingos are getting enough amount of food nor the resident fishes are getting ample amount of food so this interaction is harming both of them hence we have two minus signs for competition i hope the starting two interactions are very clear to you and why we use two plus signs for mutualism and two minus signs for competition is also clear to all of you now friends over here we have penguins right and in the other half of the screen we are having fishes what do you think what is the interaction between these penguins and these fishes yes again a common food penguins will also eat small fishes and these large fishes are also dependent on small fishes for their food right so both of them will compete with each other and hence the interaction will be competition so sharks dolphins and seabirds like penguins all eat similar types of fishes in the ocean and thus they are also competing with each other for meeting their food requirement now friends this competition can be because of food or it can be because of different other entities as well like shelter or water etc etc basically you should understand how organisms are affected in a competitive interaction and which signs are we using for this competition now friends let's move on to the further interaction and that is of predation remember predation and parasitism have same signs for representation so what do you see over here yes there is a bird and it is eating some organism right which is now dead so this is the concept of predation right one organism will predate on another organism the organism that is predating becomes the predator and the organism which is hunted down and killed is called as prey okay so all these things are known to you but just we are using these examples to convey an interaction that will be significant for your studies so over here we can have a definition first for predation predation is simply the interaction where a predator eats a prey okay and here a member of one species which is known as predator eats all or some part of the member of another species which is called as prey okay so it is not necessary that all of the organism should be eaten okay only if some part of the dead organism is being eaten then also the interaction is predation only 
So you might have seen on television or some videos in which lions are hunting the deer or all of those things. These are carnivorous animals, okay, which are hunting the herbivores. So these type of organisms, these type of interactions comes under predation. That is very easy for us to interlink. But what if I say you over here also there is a predation interaction going on. So what do you see over here? Yes, there are deers and they are grazing, they are eating the grass. So, does this also comes under predation? Yes, the grasses are not moving, but they are still harming them, they are eating them. Okay. So, herbivory is also an example of predation. And we already discussed carnivory as an example for predation. Right. So, here what do you see? There is a zebra which is eating the grasses. So, again herbivory coming under predation interaction okay and we have the representation for plus and minus signs so in this picture we can say that the zebra will get a positive sign why so because it is getting the food it is benefited but the grass are getting harmed hence a negative sign for the prey predator will be represented by a positive sign and prey with a negative sign i hope you got a gist of the representation for predation as well now over here what do you see? Yes, this is a food chain or these are many food chains together. So corn will be eaten by rat and rat will be eaten by owl. This is a three linked food chain. Then we have four linked food chain wherein four organisms are present and five linked food chain wherein five organisms are present. So here friends, we also have the example of predation in our food chain itself. Why so? Because Rats eating corn comes under herbivory which is an example of predation interaction and an owl eating that rat will also be an example of predation because it is hunting the rat and eating it. Okay, So if I take the group of corn and rat, rat will be represented by a positive sign because it is the predator and corn will be represented by a negative sign. Why? Because it is a prey. And if I consider rat and owl, then owl becomes the predator with plus sign and rat becomes the prey with a negative sign. Now, if I ask you, how can we represent frog and python in the last food chain that is provided to you? Yes, the python is the predator, so a plus sign representation and frog is the prey for that python, hence a negative sign for frog. Obviously, python will be benefited and frog will be harmed okay so you can see that we eating our foods also is a type of predation because we are eating plant derived things right someone at some point has cut down all those agricultural crops and we have all processed it and now we are eating our meal okay so predation interaction is all around us likewise other interactions are also in our vicinity if we have a keen observation to look at them. Now let us proceed with another interaction which is parasitism. So what do you see over here? Yes, these are lice which are in hair. Okay, this is a magnified video hence you can see that it is very big and it is very looking giant. Okay, so this parasitism is also a relationship between different species where one organism lives on Okay, so if the organism or the parasite is living on the host, then the parasite is called as ectoparasite. Okay, and if the parasite is living inside the host, then the parasite is called as endoparasite. Okay, remember these parasites are gaining nutrition from other organisms which are known as host. Okay, and they get benefit from this interaction, but the host are getting harmed. Hence, we have a positive sign for the parasite, but a negative sign for the host. So, over here we saw that these lysis are present in the human hair on our head. Okay, if we take the example of a girl or a boy with lice in his or her hair, then the lice are present on our head, right? Hence, these are ectoparasites, they are living outside of our body. Okay, so these lice are an example of ectoparasite. Please remember this example. 
Now, definition we have already seen. Let us move on to other things. Like in this image, what do you see? Yes, the thing we just talked. The lice in the human hair and the ticks on the dog's body. If you have seen keenly on many dogs, you can see some of them are having ticks or small insects present in their heads. Okay, so as you can see the parasite, that is also an ectoparasite. Okay, so for example of ectoparasites, we have lice and ticks. Okay, now friends, let's have a look over here. What do you see? There is an organism which is having kind of ribbon-like structure, right? And if I can take an example of cello tape, how it looks? Yes, a thin flat tape is present and this organism's body structure is also resembling that cello tape, right? Obviously, when we open it, not a closed one, okay? So, these are also called as tapeworm. I have used this analogy so that you can Remember the example only, okay? So, these tapeworms infect humans causing the disease taniasis, okay? Tapeworm and taniasis, you can link it, it's very easy. And what are the symptoms of this infection? It includes abdominal pain, loss of appetite, upset stomach and so on and so forth. My point being over here is that in this tapeworm or taniasis infection, these organisms are living inside our body, okay? They are living inside the host body. Hence, these are referred to as endoparasite. The endo part of the word is meaning inside, okay? So, please remember the example of ectoparasite for lice and ticks and as example for endoparasite, this beautiful tapeworm. So, friends, now let us move on to another organism. As you can see, this organism is leaching off or it is sucking human's blood, okay? And this leaching word resembles with its actual name. This is called as leech or if we go for the biological name, it is called as hirudinaria, okay? This one, as you can guess, is outside of the host body. Hence, it is an ectoparasite. And what is it doing? It is sucking blood for the nutrition from its host. So, all these ticks, lice, leech or tapeworm are deriving nutrition from their host and in the process they are harming the host. Hence, a positive sign for the parasites and a negative sign for the host. Okay, so now you understand why we use a plus and a minus sign for parasitism as well. So, we have covered in ectoparasite the examples of leech, ticks, lice, okay? And for endoparasite, we have tapeworms. Now, friends, over here, as we just talked, lice in human hair is also a parasite. And you can see this girl is having those lice in her hair and the other girl is very shocked because these lice can actually travel from one person to another person. So, she is also at risk of infection, okay? So, similarly, if a dog is having ticks on its hair, then the other dogs which come under its vicinity are also at risk of infection. That means parasites can actually change their host. Okay. Now, friends, let us move on to another example which is commensalism. Remember, commensalism and amensalism to the very bottom of our table that we previously saw have one zero sign. Okay. Commensalism has positive and zero. Amensalism has minus and zero. Now, let us proceed with what is commensalism. So, here commensalism is coming from the word which is commensal. And what do we mean by this word commensal? It means to eat at the same table. So, it is a long term close association between two species in which one is benefited while the other interacting species is neither harmed nor benefited. Hence, a plus sign for the organism which is getting the benefit and a zero sign for the organism which is neither benefited nor harmed. So, as we just talked, the representation is plus and zero. So, these sharks are hunting for their food, but while eating, some scrapes of their food will fall down and these ramona fishes will eat those scraps. 
and also while swimming along with sharks since sharks are very huge organisms these ramora fishes escape their predators okay so they are at advantage and the sharks are neither benefited nor they are harmed hence this interaction is a perfect example for commensalism let us have a look over here so the ramora fishes swims very close to the sharks and they feed on the scraps of food dropped by the shark in this process they also gain protection from their predators so friends moving ahead now what are you looking at these are whales but do you see there is different organism which is seen attached to the whales right so these yellow color organisms are present on the whales it is present on their body what are they doing there they are getting benefits from the whales obviously and these whales have these organisms called as barnacles attached to their body these whales are unaffected with the presence or absence of these barnacles but barnacles have many benefits from these whales how let us see so barnacles attach themselves to the whales and get a place to live along with the access to plenty of food because whales will be eating and again the scraps will be available for these barnacles to eat while the whales remain unaffected by them so a zero sign for the whales but a positive sign for the barnacles similarly in our previous example a zero sign for the shark but a positive sign for the ramora fishes now friends let us move on to another example for commensalism so over here what are you looking at yes it is a beautiful flower let me tell you the name it is orchid and it is growing on another tree okay so these orchids get nutrition from another tree so they are benefited and the tree is neither harmed nor it is benefited so again a plus sign for the orchids and a zero sign for the tree on which these orchids are growing okay so as we just talked orchids on a tree are another example of commensalism orchids obtain nutrients shelter support from the trees while the trees remain unaffected so these are the three examples from which you can easily remember commensalism interaction first one sharks and the ramora fishes then we have whales attached with barnacles and the third one is orchids on a tree now friends let us move on to amensalism so what are you seeing over here isn't this image an example of predation because these cows are eating the grass this comes under herbivory so why do we have this image in amensalism just wait a moment we will get to it first we will understand what do we mean by amensalism so in this interaction what happens is one species is harmed and the other species is unharmed okay so one species that is harmed will be represented by a minus sign and a zero sign for the species which is neither harmed nor benefited so we will get back to this example in just few moments just bear with me for few seconds first we have a difficult example and then you can easily understand it with the easier example so over here we have a fungus which is called as penicillium you might have taken penicillin drug for your cold or some illness okay it is a well known antibiotic this penicillin is produced by penicillium fungi hence the name penicillin okay so let's circle back to our topic of discussion over here penicillium fungi growing on a nutrient medium near staphylococcus bacteria produces the antibiotic penicillin and it kills the nearby bacteria so in this interaction staphylococcus is harmed and killed while the penicillium is unaffected let us understand this with this image so you are seeing red colored nutrient medium this is like food which we are providing so that organisms will grow on it okay and i am intending to grow staphylococcus bacteria these bacteria are growing but there is the presence of penicillium fungi as well now it is a inherent property of this fungi to produce the antibiotic which is penicillin and this penicillin proves harmful and it kills the bacteria that are present over there so 
penicillium is doing its normal job. It has not done anything specifically to kill the bacteria. But still the bacteria are getting killed. Okay. Hence we can say that the penicillium will be represented by a zero sign because it is not its intention to kill the bacteria. Okay. So it is remaining unharmed. But the bacteria are getting killed. Hence they will be represented by a minus sign. Okay. Over here these cows eating the grass comes under predation. You are right about that. But my concern is different. While these cows are eating the grass, what is happening is that many insects are hidden in the grass as well. Like say for example the grasshoppers. So, while this cow is eating the grass, those insects are getting exposed to the outside environment. Now, they are prone to getting spotted by their predators. Okay. So, the cow eating the grass actually negatively affected those hidden insects present in the grass. Hence, and the cow was not having any intention to do so. So, we can say that the cows will be represented by a zero sign and the insects which are hidden, which are getting exposed to their predators are getting harmed. Hence, they are represented by a minus sign. So, over here we can say that Cattle grazing on grass exposes the insects hidden in there which are now at risk of predation by their predators. The insects are harmed, hence a minus sign, while the cow remains unaffected, hence a plus sign. So friends, we are done with all the interactions and we have studied them using examples as well. Now, let us come back to the questions that we intend to solve because we are trying to explain all of the concepts basically to solve the questions only, right? So, let us have the first question over here. This is a match up kind of question. So, you have to match the entries present in list 1 with the entries present in list 2. This question came in May 2023, that means in this year itself. Let us see the entries now in list 1 and in list 2. List 1 has interactions and list 2 has the representation signs for species A and B. The first interaction is mutualism, then we have commensalism, then we have amensalism and lastly we are having parasitism. Now in the entries for list 2, we are having plus sign for species A, zero sign for species B. Next second entry is minus and zero, third is plus and minus and fourth one is plus and plus. So, let's now circle back to what we have learnt. Remember mutualism, mutual word and two plus signs. Where do you see two plus signs? In the fourth entry in list two. That should be matched with A. Okay. So, A will be matched with four. Now, let us go for the interactions in the bottom side of the table which had two zero signs. Right. And amensalism because of the dash sign we said that it has minus and zero representation. Minus and zero is given in second entry in list two. Hence, C, amensalism should be matched with two. Commensalism, again one zero. So, only one option is left that is first one. But we also studied that there is no dash sign in commensalism. So, a positive and a zero sign as representation for commensalism. So, B should be matched with one. Then we had D that is parasitism. Remember we said that for predation and parasitism we have opposite signs plus and minus. Plus and minus is given in third entry in list 2. So D should be matched with 3. So friends as you can see we have just used the table and by remembering that table we can easily solve the questions which are coming from this topic. But we have also seen the discussion as well. So, it is wrong if you only just jot down or memorize the table and don't know the concept behind it. So, if we discuss mutualism, you can take the example of lichen in which fungus and algae both are benefited. So, two plus signs. Commensalism, we have seen the sharks and ramora. Shark is neither harm nor benefited and ramora are benefited. So, a plus and zero sign. Amensalism, we just talked. You stepping on ants. Ants getting killed, hence a minus sign and for you we will have a zero sign. And for parasitism, best example is the lice in human hair. Okay, lice are getting benefits, so a plus sign. 
and we are getting harmed, hence a minus sign. So by understanding and linking these simple everyday examples, you can attempt these simple questions and also by remembering that table. Now we had all the discussions about our correct answer. These are the options that were provided in the paper and as per our discussion, option C is the correct answer for this question. Now let us proceed with the next question. Over here, we have a question which is quite big in its length, right? What happens is that in your examination, when you see such a big question, such a lengthy question, you get an instinct to look at that question afterwards in your examination, speculating that this might be a difficult question to answer. But friends, I suggest you, when you get your paper, please go through the question paper once, okay? Not very detailed reading, but you can have a quick glance on the paper. And when you look at these kind of questions which are lengthy, please see and search for familiar words. If they are present, even one of them in the question, please don't skip this question while attempting your paper. Don't keep it on hold for afterwards because what will happen is these questions are actually simple to solve. But since you are lacking time, you get in a state of panic and there is an increased chances of you committing a mistake answering such simple questions as well. Okay, so now that we are done with the tips, let's go back to the question. It says, while explaining interspecific interaction of population, what do you mean by interspecific? Yes, just split the words and you will get the answer. Inter means between, specific here means species. So, the interactions of population that is happening in between different species. That is the meaning of this term interspecific, interaction of population. So, let's again circle back to the question. While explaining interspecific interaction of population, plus sign is assigned for beneficial interaction, minus sign is assigned for detrimental interaction and zero is for neutral interaction. Which of the following interactions can be assigned plus for one species and minus for another species involved in the interaction? Now friends, just tell me, didn't you already know that plus sign is for beneficial interaction, minus is for detrimental interaction and zero is for neutral interaction? If you have read this concept only one time, then also you can say that what is the meaning of these signs, okay? So, there was no point of giving this much interaction, this much segment of the question because you already knew it. And the actual question actually starts from which of the following interactions and it's only two line question, okay? So, I suggest you please have a detailed look on the question at one time, okay? Don't get panicked. This question came in NEET 2022. That means if one person has appeared in NEET 2022 and he or she has not qualified, then even by understanding of this question, he or she could have attempted NEET 2023 question that we solved previously. Okay. Let us have the options over here. We have option 1 which is competition, option 2 predation, option 3 amensalism and option 4 commensalism. Remember, plus and minus sign is for, yes, from the table, predation and parasitism. Predation is given in your option, so that becomes the answer. Let's understand it with an example as well that we have already discussed. A rat eating the grass is predation. Rat will be represented by a positive sign and grass will be represented by a negative sign. So, predation has the representation of plus and minus sign. To also list down the answer for different options, competition has minus minus sign, amensalism has minus and zero sign and commensalism has plus and zero sign. So you saw this question was very simple. This is the benefit if you keep answering the previous year questions and you keep doing the practice questions. The questions that will come in your examination will not frighten you, okay? We have many such practice questions for you to practice on our platform. There are also many mock tests available. So, please join us and raise your understanding for your upcoming competitive examination. So, that's all for this video. I hope to meet you soon with another concept. Thank you for listening.